60 minutes overtime. This building across the square looks quite new. What is that? That is the Google London office in Pancras Square. This week on 60 Minutes, we reported on DeepMind, Google's artificial intelligence research lab, where we explored what's coming next with co-founder and CEO Demis Hassabis, a leader in this new world. Hello, Scott. It's nice to see you again. DeepMind's AI assistant, Astra, can see, hear, and analyze the world around it. It can recognize famous paintings like this one. That is Edward Hopper's automat. And guess what its subject might be feeling. What emotion is she exhibiting? The subject in the painting appears pensive and contemplative. But with a little push, it can do even more. Can you create a story around this picture? It's a chilly evening in the city. A Tuesday, perhaps. The woman, perhaps named Eleanor, sits alone in the diner, enjoying a warm cup of coffee. Have you found yourself saying, I, I didn't see that coming? It's happened many times, actually, since the beginning of DeepMind. And Astra, just being able to be that good at understanding the physical world was not something uh, we were expecting it to be that good at that quickly. While reporting this story, we learn more about the strides DeepMind has made with AI that can produce images, videos, and even three-dimensional worlds. Two years ago, we were shown a technology that could create videos with simple text prompts, like Golden Retriever with Wings. Oh, look at that. Since then, it has taken a massive leap forward. It's just a way clearer, more detailed image. And the snowflakes sort of falling and on the him and collecting And the snowflakes falling. Well. Director of Product Management Tom Hume showed us this model called VO2. It recreated the fantastical scene of the Golden Retriever, but with astonishing photorealistic detail. It even knows how wings flap, like yeah. how it would flap in the air. It's pretty realistic here. Eventually, we've seen this in science fiction. It's sort of like the holodeck from Star Trek, where you can just imagine any environment, the system will generate it for you, and then you can sort of um, immerse yourself in that, in that imagined environment. Asabas and DeepMind research scientist Jack Parker Holder wanted to show us Genie 2, a world model that uses images to create interactive 3D environments. This is a photograph taken by someone in our team somewhere in California. And what we then do is ask Genie to convert this into an interactive world. So we prompt the model with this image, and Genie converts it into a game-like world that you can then interact in. Every further pixel is generated by a generative AI model. So the AI is making up this scene as it goes along. Exactly, yes. Someone from our team is actually playing this. They're pressing the W key to move forwards. And then from that point inwards, every subsequent frame is generated by the AI. Parker Holder told us these models could eventually train AI agents to accomplish tasks in these environments. We've created this world with three different arches, where on the left we see some, some nice plants. In the middle, it's an opening, which we don't quite know what's in there. And on the right, there's a staircase. And rather than a human playing, we take um, one of our most capable AI agents and we say, can you actually go up the staircase for us? And as it's climbing the stairs, the Genie world model is creating the world around it on the fly instead of imagining what's up there. Uh, effectively, you've got one AI system playing in the mind of another AI system. So you've got one generating the world and the other one is moving around and accomplishing goals in that world. And the practical implication of that would be what? So, of course, there's lots of implications for entertainment and generating games and videos. But actually, the bigger goal is building a world model, a model that can understand our world. You could imagine future versions creating an almost an infinite variety of different uh, simulated environments which the, the AIs can learn um, from and interact in and then translate that to the real world. So if you had a full-sized robot, for example, you wouldn't train him on how to navigate the world out in the street in front of the building. No. You would put him in this scenario so that he could figure out how to climb stairs. That's right. It's much harder to collect data in the real world, much more expensive, much slower. Uh, for example, robotics data. But in simulator worlds, you can sort of collect almost an unlimited amount. We wondered if Google could use the trove of geographic data that's at its fingertips to advance this technology. 
Google has access to almost infinite data. You've got Google Maps, you've got Street View, you've got Google Earth. Could all of those data be collected together in order to train AI agents? That's what we're exploring at the moment actually is, is um, um, both ways. So potentially using street view kind of data to give real world understanding uh, and geographical understanding to our AI systems. Um, and then on the other hand, you can imagine things like this bringing to life a static images of real places, whether it's your own holiday photos or um, actually street view uh, views, which are static currently, and actually making them interactive and 3D so you can look around um, the place itself.